Hi guys, um, one final thing I want to say about um, specialisation of weapons. So what we have here is a custom made Wilkinson sword um, from the 1860s um, and um, essentially it's got a specialised thrusting blade on it. You could call it a, a small or a light rapier blade. Um, and in actual fact, um, one of the things that people um, sometimes assume or, or argue for is that uh, making the weapon, as I've mentioned before, more specialised somehow makes it lesser or less good. Okay? Whereas in actual fact, if you think about this, what this weapon is, is specialised for thrusting, so it's lighter, the point of balance is closer to my hand, and it's narrower. So it's going to go into a target more easily and come out again more easily. Uh, including penetrating clothes, which is an important factor. As I've mentioned before during the Crimean War, the heavy winter clothing was sometimes difficult to penetrate by swords and bayonets. Um, so it's got better penetration and it's more nimble, it's quicker. Okay? So I essentially have here a weapon where the officer who ordered it from Wilkinson probably was a keen foil fencer and wanted a weapon that suited his style of swordplay more than a typical sabre. Um, and quite obviously with this, he didn't really have any great expectations to be cutting at the opponent. He wanted to, he wanted to parry and thrust. He wanted to stab the opponent. Okay? And that's absolutely fine. If you want to specialise your system of swordplay onto one particular aspect and really emphasise that, then you know, you will, you will get better at that, um, at that particular thing, and there'll be a payoff for that. So, um, it's not always a question of a weapon or a, a sword fighting style or system trying to be good at all things, trying to be a jack of all trades. Sometimes you want to be a master of a particular thing or a small selection of things. Um, and that suits some people's fighting styles more than necessarily just trying to do everything. Thank you.